I'm John Lanius. Welcome to The Room. The Room gives you access to GenieCast top thought leaders, authors, entrepreneurs, business coaches, and much more. Our guests will share ideas and concepts that you may use to better your organization and propel your teams. Today, we're going to switch things up a bit and welcome both Johanna Masca and Alyssa Farah to the show. They both come from different sides of the aisle, and they'll teach us how to bridge the divide. So Johanna Masca is currently CEO of Global Situation Room Incorporated. Masca served as White House Director of Press Advance for President Obama, beginning with his original Iowa caucus campaign. Alyssa Farah is a communication strategist and founding partner of Merrimack, Potomac and Charles. Previously, Farah served as White House Communications Director under President Donald Trump. She also served as Chief Spokesperson for the U.S. Department of Defense, as well as Vice President Mike Pence's Press Secretary. Johanna and Alyssa, welcome to the room. Thank you so Thank much you. for having us. Excellent. All right. So let's jump right in. So how did your backgrounds lead you to work for, for United States presidents? And let's start with Alyssa. Well, thank you again for having me. Um, I feel very strongly about public service. I actually, unlike Johanna, don't have a campaign background. I spent a long time working on Capitol Hill, um, working for the House Freedom Caucus. I worked on a variety of policies and on the communication side of things. And when the opportunity presented itself to serve in the Trump-Pence administration, I went in, uh, starting with Vice President Pence, where I served for two years, then going over to the Department of Defense, where I was the senior spokesperson for just about a year. Then finally, at the height of the COVID pandemic, I was asked to join the White House um, as communications director under President Trump. And it was a tough decision to make, but I'm someone who feels very strongly about if you're given an opportunity to be in public life, to serve your country, you should step up and consider it. And I was grateful to have had that opportunity. Thank you, Alyssa. Johanna. Yeah, so I grew up in Galesburg, Illinois. Um, Galesburg, Illinois is the little town that President Obama talked about in 2004 when he addressed the Democratic National Convention. Um, we lost Maytag, um, and that was just one of the many signs that the economy was changing. I had been raised by a pretty conservative family from the Midwest, but I was very energized to get involved in President Obama's campaign. I'd worked in politics in Kansas with Kathleen Sebelius as governor and in Iowa. And so when he even thought he was running, I decided um, to harass the would-be state director until I got a job on the Obama campaign. And then I ended up um, getting to travel the journey with him of uh, both the campaign around the country and then into the White House. Um, I traveled with him to 42 countries and most of the time had to pinch myself um, at the experiences that I got to be privy to. What was it like shaping and influencing the image of presidents? And uh, Johanna, let's start with you. Yeah, um, I, again, Galesburg, Illinois, the first experience I ever had with a president was President Bill Clinton was going to drive uh, into Galesburg, Illinois, and my family decided um, that we were going to sit on the motorcade route and try to watch him go by. And so, uh, you know, I, I remember being so thrilled to get to be a president um, at the time. And I never could have imagined actually working for that uh, president um, for the office and then, um, you know, on behalf of the United States government um, flying on Air Force One. So when you are shaping the image of the president, you know that all eyes are on you. Literally, um, at any moment the president needs to make news, there's a pool of journalists that travel with him for that purpose. And so anything you do wrong is going to be very apparent, very quick. Um, anything you do right uh, may not come across all the time because um, there's always going to be another side that's uh, taking a different perspective. And look, like the president is never going to make a decision and please every single person in the United States and in the world. And so you have to be um, very cautious in everything that you're doing and who you're communicating with, how you're engaging, how you're using the office of the presidency. And so, um, you know, having seen it up close, 
I have all sorts of thoughts of what we did right and what we did wrong and what we could do better together in the future. Fantastic. And then Alyssa, a very different president. What was your experience? A very different president, but great answer, Johanna. Something that stood out to me when I first went in to work for the vice president, um, someone giving me advice said, you know, be careful of what you say or what you let him say. It could move markets. And that stuck with me. That was something that I, I thought, you know, I need to be cautious of that. And then when I went to back to the White House to serve the president, the same person said, be careful of what he says or what you say on his behalf. It could start a global conflict. And that really put into perspective just the depth and breadth of what we were doing in those jobs. It's so easy when you're that close to the most powerful individual on the planet to almost lose sight of how powerful they are, the role they play around the world and domestically. So I was always very cautious knowing that at all moments, the globe is watching us, but also his constituents, the American people are watching him. That said, Johanna and I um, worked for very different presidents. One thing I would say I think they kind of had in common is there was some degree of a celebrity culture around them. That was interesting for me working for Trump because um, we Republicans don't usually have that sort of attention and focus around our, um, our candidates or around our elected officials. But with President Trump, every move he made was watched. Every word he said was dissected. And as anyone who's a who's a follower of President Trump's or a detractor, they know he's his own spokesperson. So as somebody who was technically serving in the role as his spokesperson, I knew that my job was really to get the best information in front of him, get the best advisors in front of him to brief him before he was speaking and hope that those messages would resonate. But at the end of the day, the buck always stops with the individual. And you know, now in the, the roles that uh, both Johanna and I have in the private sector, we're able to take some of that know-how of how you can avoid problems up front, whether it's just through properly vetting and preparing the information that you put in front of people or that you yourself put out there. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it was certainly a challenge when you're working for the leader of the free world and ultimately they're going to make the decisions they want to. And the two of you have recently partnered with GenieCast uh, on your Fireside Chat program, Bridging the Divide. So what can we expect to gain from this virtual experience? And I, Johanna, go ahead. Yeah, I think we're experiencing in our families, in our companies, in our schools, in our organizations, just real divide. We're seeing people leave organizations and say that they can't agree with anything that they've been actively supporting for years. Um, I, I think that this problem of you know uh, political instability and um, resistance has really gone to a local level, which is not okay. And the only way it's gonna change is if we change it on a local level. If we start leading these kinds of conversations in which we engage all viewpoints, um, no matter whether you agree with them, you know, the, the, the beauty and what I started with, I really believe America's potential to lead around the globe is the fact that we have so much diversity in our country, that we have diaspora populations that are larger than home country populations, that we represent the globe. And when we lead, when we inspire those people to build businesses and to bring solutions to the world, I believe America will continue its economic dominance and we will have a more moral dominance. So, you know, my perspective is that to change that, to change Washington, this divide that's in part, I believe, a facade of trying to get your eyeballs and your attention. Um, if we change that at a local level, then we can actually impact Washington, both for our businesses' success, for our organization's success, for our nonprofit success, and for America's success long, long term uh, globally. And, and then Alyssa, from your perspective, what will we gain from this virtual experience? Well, thank you, John. So the, my answer would be this. We can't afford as a country to not address this issue. We could, we could try to put it off a little bit longer, but it is coming to a head. 
The U.S. is the preeminent world power. Countries all over the world look to us for leadership. They rely on us for leadership. We are truly the leader of the free world. But our political divide has gotten to a point where it is, has dis potential destabling effects, not just domestically, but around the globe. And we're facing a time where we see the rise of China trying to ar arise as the preeminent global power. We see countries that do not share our values wanting to fill that void. Um, when Johanna and I published our piece in USA Today, it was on the heels of President Biden uh, going to the G7. And we both said, you know, if you're rooting for America, if you're rooting for our values, you should be rooting for President Biden because countries all over the globe are looking for American leadership, whether it's on human rights, whether it's on economic rights, uh, in, in various, act, uh, various efforts toward freedom and democracy abroad. They expect American leadership. So at home, though, how can we facilitate keeping America as this leader of the free world and trying to get us through this period of political divide I think it be, be, begins as simple as a conversation, having two people with wildly different backgrounds talking honestly and open, openly to each other. There's no topic that Johanna and I aren't willing to discuss. And while some policy areas, we're, gonna, we're going to agree to disagree, the mere act of facilitating conversation is the first step. I think also some of it is kind of demystifying for the public what is wrong with Washington. Everyone has their theories, but both of us have, for better or worse, been Washington insiders. We know how Capitol Hill works. We know how the White House works. We know how the peacocks that you're gonna see on cable news work, but we can tell you who the serious people that want good for the whole of the country are and how we can empower them to get things done on both sides of the aisle. So that's what we're hoping to offer your audience. And I think it has impacts for whether it's families, individuals, friends, but also for the business community. They're looking at what happens in DC and they don't know what's gonna happen any day of the week because we're so divided, we're so unpredictable and we need a stable country where we can work together and we can see the good in one another. Yeah, I love that you mentioned demystifying because I, I have this sense, given your your divergent backgrounds, and we and we have a sense that being able to see behind the scenes and 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 hearing you know your experience, I'm I, I'm I'm curious. Um, say more about your experience and really talking about behind the scenes and and how that's going to benefit those that engage in this program, Johanna. Yeah, I mean, in terms of this White House, it's. Um, uh, President Biden's White House, I know these players on a first name basis. And I know kind of what goes into their mindset. I know what they're looking for. Um, and um, really thrilled that they are there. I know that some disagree with a lot of decisions they make, but happy to take a step back and say, here's what I know about the decisions they're making. On the program, the other thing that I think we can't say enough is that we are living in a risk-filled world. Um, you know, we saw risks um, that that were growing during the Obama administration, grew further in the Trump administration, and look, a global pandemic was something on the National Security radar, Council's radar for a long time. What else needs to be on the radar of businesses? You know, the political instability that Alyssa just addressed, that both of us are addressing, that is a significant issue for a business. There are some businesses that are leaning into that divide to uh, generate their sales, and, um, and that's their tactic. There's some businesses, though, uh, the majority of businesses that need to appeal around the globe that are looking to solve global problems who are navigating this risk-filled world in a very different way and trying to figure out how they get their solution to the vast number of people, regardless of you know, the, the roadblocks that come in the way, um, whether it's political national security or a global pandemic um, and, and you know, like will derail their plans that they have. So what I heard a lot in that was reform. So Alyssa, shifting to you, with so much reform that needs to happen, what would you say to the various sides that refuse to get along? Well, I think the answer is often somewhere in the middle. And I think that where conversation is still, still being had in Washington, as rare as it may be, is going to be some of the moderate Republicans and the moderate Democrats. 
two examples right now that I would I would point you to. Um, we we there's an infrastructure package on Capitol Hill that anyone right or left is going to tell you we need an infrastructure package. Whether you're talking the brick and mortar roads and infrastructure, or you're talking much more, you know, things like cyber inf infrastructure. Our country is so vulnerable to major cybersecurity breaches, and we have to address it. But the sides are so far apart um, on whether the spending levels that we're gonna we're gonna reach with it or what we're going to incorporate into it. But there are always those few select members who are willing to get together quietly and hash out on paper. And we're starting to see that. I'm actually bullish that we're going to see an infrastructure package. It may not be quite as big as the White House would want it to be, but that's the beauty of the policymaking world. That's how it should work. So clearly the shares from both of you, I mean, I get the importance of, of your program, Bridging the Divide. I'd just like to hear from each of you, and I'll start with Johanna. It's like, why, why are conversations more than what you've already said? Why is Bridging the Divide so important to participate in? I guess it's now or never, um, because the truth is, if we don't change what we're doing, we are headed towards some dark days. And so, you know, to the extent that you're looking to bring people together in your organization, um, that's why I really respect Alyssa. Both of us kind of have different views than our family on some issues. We have different views from our parties on some issues, but it doesn't really matter what any of those views are. We're gonna to try to bring people together and try to work towards consensus. And, um, and you know, the solution that gets to the best, the biggest number of people. So I think it's really important for an organization. I mean, we have massive challenges ahead of us. Climate change, we've got fires raging in California. We've got significant hurdles um, here and around the world. China is absolutely asserting themselves on the global stage in a way that we haven't seen. How are we going to, as a country, as an organization, as an individual, how are we going to engage our energy, our limited energy, so that it's not focused on the peacocks who want your attention for the resistance, but rather focused towards how are we going to make America strong for all of us? Um, because I would just say, you know, if the world is as it should be, it will require us all. So all of those perspectives are valid. Spot on. And then Alyssa? Well, Johanna hit on some of the key issues that we're facing, but one I want to raise, just coming off of what was one of the most challenging years in U.S. history, dealing with the COVID pandemic, we're not out of the woods. We have nearly 50% of the population that is vaccine hesitant, that has not gotten vaccinated, they don't trust it, and they're not trusting the science behind it. And much of it is motivated by politics. And these people exist on both sides of the aisle. It's not just a right issue, there are some on the left as well. And we cannot wait any longer to start having real conversations between people who disagree to try to create trust, to know that we are honest brokers, we are trying to do the best for our fellow man, for our fellow American. The time can't wait because we are at a place where this virus could come back. It could come back in a very real, real way and we'll have no one to blame but ourselves because we couldn't even convince our fellow man and woman that yes, they can trust this vaccine. It's not about politics, it's about science. The best doctors in the world worked on it. And that's gonna be, I think, one of the starting points of the many conversations Johanna and I have, have been having externally is talking to the people that we know in this White House on Capitol Hill and saying, we need to be getting that message out as quickly as possible. This has been an absolutely incredible conversation for me, and I'm sure for all of our viewers. I'd like to thank Alyssa Farah and Johanna Masca for being our guests on the room today and sharing their thoughts and insights. And uh, for both of you, is there anything you'd like to leave us with today? I'll start with Alyssa. We are much more, there's more that unites us as a nation than divides us. There is more we have in common, and if we work to our common good, we, there is nothing that we can't accomplish as an American people. That's great. Johanna? And I still believe, despite all of the media telling you otherwise, that our best days are ahead and that it's up to us 
to be the ones who um, drive towards that future. I love that. All right. I hope everybody joins your program here on GenieCast, Bridging the Divide. Uh, thank you again so much for joining us today. Thank you. Join us next time for more insightful and inspiring thought leaders, authors, entrepreneurs, CEOs, and much more. I'm John Lanius. We'll see you next time on The Room.